Okay, good evening class. My name is Latara Burley and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of the Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in the year 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you to the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and the President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true and correct original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord, the true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super and corporal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh let the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses a top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern 
and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of times. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And we will have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Chuck Marshall. The scripture reading is Colossians, the first chapter, be read by Dr. Pamela Turner. And we have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. May we all bow our hearts and minds into Yahshua at this time and thank him for the abundance of knowledge that he is giving us. And we thank him for the knowledge that we are about to receive. We ask him to take away the carnal thoughts and the carnal problems that we have in the world today and have us concentrate strictly on him. We thank him for all that we have received and all that we will get in the future because in this life, the knowledge of him is the only thing that is worthwhile. In Yahshua's name, let's all declare, hallelujah. 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 Try not the microphone again and uh, just let me know after how it went. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the
that came out good. <laughs> Beautiful song. All right. So um, for the scripture reading, I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, inserting the proper names, Colossians, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh and Timotheus, our brother, to the sons and faithful brethren in the Messiah, which are at Coloss, grace be unto you and peace from Yahweh, our father and the savior, Yahshua, the Messiah. We give thanks to Yahweh and the father of our savior, Yahshua, the Messiah, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Yahshua, the Messiah and of the love which ye have to all the sons for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of the Messiah, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Messiah unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of the sins who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of Elohim, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Yahweh, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make, would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. That was Colossians, the first chapter. Uh, hallelujah. 
Uh, good evening, brethren. So uh, tonight we're just going to call on people and they can get into uh, whatever Yahshua puts on their heart. Um, I'd like to call for our first speaker, uh, Dr. Tony Oliver. Oh, good evening, class. <laughs> good evening. Uh, it's an uh, honor to have anything to say uh, that came to uh, I have my father Yahweh. Um, I'm not a whole lot of my mind. I, uh, maybe we can just get the scripture lesson. Start right at uh, two and one, Tony. Okay. Colossians two one. For I would. It's the you, first chapter. It's the first chapter. Yep. Sorry, I wrote down two one, and I it's it's one and one. Thank you. Colossians one and one. Paul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh and Timotheus our brother to the sons and faithful brethren in Yahshua, which are at Coloss. Grace be unto you and peace from Yahweh our Father and the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. We give thanks to Yahweh and the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Yahshua the Messiah and of the love which you have to all the sons. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth. As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Yahshua, who also declared us, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Hold on a second, Lisa. Tony, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I just wanna make sure. <laughs> I was waiting to get to uh, where he said he created all things. Uh, by him, all things were created. The first uh, it's a little farther down, so I can drop yeah. down, Tony. Yeah, Sorry. Drop down. Okay, right. sure. We're almost there, but yeah. Um, uh, we we'll are go down to 15, Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature? Okay, uh, the image. Can you read that again slow, please? Yep. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? The firstborn of every creature. Okay, can we get John 530, 5, 5, John 539, please? Yep. Yep, um, John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, we, we, now read the other scripture again, please. Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? See, the now, uh, uh, we always go back to Moses and we find out Yahweh, uh, after the uh, 10 devil plagues, they had to take out a lamb and uh, they had to take the blood of the lamb. It was uh, the Passover. That's where it was instituted. And uh, we know Yahshua came into a field, the scriptures. <laughs> Can we get over there? We said without, without every jot and tittle. 
I'm not sure that you got you, you got, y'all know what I'm talking about. Every jot and tittle. Mm-hmm. So right. That means everything Yash was doing, he's fulfilling something in them scriptures. And, and the founder, this this school is a, a divine vision revelation that was given to Dr. King, straight from Yahweh, straight from Yash Messiah. Matter of fact, he had the question when he had the vision. He asked the question, "What what to do?" And, and Yahshua just uh, spoke right within him and said, "Teach your people." So he he don't have nothing to do with it. Yahshua just doing all the whole work, at, and he's doing everything. But uh, what I'm getting to is the scriptures that is about Yahshua. We find out that after the death of the Lamb, um, they they um, turn to Israel. Can we get over there with uh, uh, Yahshua? Uh, God, we told him to uh, uh, come to the mount. When Yahshua was down, he said, come down so I can send you into Pharaoh. We, we, I, I, the thing I want to keep in mind that these scriptures is about Yahshua. It, it, it's all about him. He was back there. He, he, we, we, yeah, uh, uh, the visions uh, showed us that he fulfilled it. It also showed us that he's instituting. <laughs> so he's the same one that gave the law. He's the same one that, that fulfilled the law. I know, we, I know the term is always used, Yahweh. When we read the uh, when we can read the scriptures, but we got to keep in mind when when Moses was given a vision, he was told, "Okay, let, let's let's get up, let's get there." What uh, Moses said, "Come down." Yahshua Yash, told Moses, "Come down, deliver my deliver his people." Can we find that? Yeah. Do you want do you want the jot scripture or not? Yeah, yeah. If you got the jot, please. I got that. Yep. Um, we're in Matthew, the fifth chapter, eighteen but I'll start at 17. So Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. See that jot and tittle, that, that's, that's crossing the I's and crossing the T's and dotting the I's. He, he, he didn't miss nothing. See, Yahshua was the only that's, and, uh, uh, that, where is that we say? Uh, uh, besides Yah, there's no salvation. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can find it, but it says Yah by Yah's sinner. I think it might be Psalms or somewhere. So Yah, beside me, there is no savior. I think it says. Yeah, yeah that one. Well, if you can't find it. We we know the uh, scripture I'm referring to. So besides Yahweh, there's no salvation. So mm-hmm. Yahweh is salvation. Yahshua is salvation. See Yahweh, uh, court, uh, Isaiah. Big, mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Isaiah forty three and eleven. I even I am Yahweh, and beside me there is no savior. Now, wait a minute now. So Yahweh is salvation. That's 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 what he's saying. But see Yahweh, I'll, let's can we get over there with Yahshua told Moses uh, to come down. The, uh, I'm come down now at the burning yeah. bush. Yeah. So that's in in Exodus. Exodus three and seven um and yahweh said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows and i am come down to deliver wait, them wait wait, wait, wait. Now, who, who 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 said that what who who said that Say, who who who's to, who who's talking yashua really <laughs> yahweh, yahweh. Yahweh. But, but yahweh, yahweh. yahweh right Mm-hmm. Read it one more time, please. And and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land. Yeah. F- mm-hmm. yep, I'm sorry. Now, Yahweh said, I come down. But we know from the result of the divine vision revelation that hey, it was Joshua who was down there who came down. He 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 don't say he don't say Yahshua. He say Yahweh. Now we we should say well even in the, let's go to the burning bush where he where he gave him the name. Okay. When he goes to ask his name. In Exodus um, three. And uh, when, when Moses says when he asks what his name yeah. is, and then he tell him his name. Yeah, we're in Exodus three. And um, three, 13, we'll just pick it up at 13. And Moses said unto Yahweh, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath said unto me, 
the Elohim of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And right. So now, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Go no, finish. Go Please, okay. Please. So now we know, I mean, the world don't have a clue about this and we wouldn't have a clue about it either but for the divine vision revelation. We know who he's communicating, communicating with. He's communicating with Yahshua. Yahshua, we, we know from the, from the vision revelation, Yahshua has given him a vision to come down where he's already at, you see. And he, now, now he actually, now Yashua, now keep this in mind, Yashua was giving him this vision at the burning bush. We're, we're aware of that. But does he say, when he asked for his name, do he say, do he say Yashua? No, he says Yahweh. Now we got to think, now why is this Yashua who give it, who he asked for a name, he didn't say Yashua. It was Yashua just giving him the vision. We know that, who, 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 who that that uh, that burning bush was Yashua. But he didn't say yes. He said Yahweh. We should say, well, that's, that's, well, why he didn't say when he asked for name, he didn't say Yahshua. So why he didn't say Yahshua? Now Yahweh is salvation, right? Yahweh in pure spirit state. Then Yahweh take on shape and form. We say Yahweh Elohim, and then Yahweh manifests in the flesh. Now H two O got three manifestations, but it's still H two O, and every manifestation is H two O. I don't care if it's the water, it's the ice, or it's the gas. And it's the same with Yahweh. Yahweh is, is in pure spirit. Yahweh is Elohim. Yahweh is Joshua. And it's vice versa. Yahshua is Elohim. Yahshua is Yahweh. It's no division. It's, it, he just got, see, not manifestation. So, so, Yashua, so Joshua said, Yahshua said, my name is Yahweh. And Yahshua is Yahweh. You see, you go over there and actually, you've seen the father. He said, uh, you look at that, uh, Philip, have I been so long with you? So Yahshua, he got every right to tell Moses, Yahweh, because he is Yahweh. But why doesn't he say what Yahshua? Because Yahshua, he's not given salvation yet. See, salvation was not available. See, Yahshua, sal Yahweh, when first spirit, he sees salvation there. See, yeah, when he, even when he take on the same form, he's salvation. But it's not manifested, you see. It's not manifested until he's taking on that same form. It, it, he was slain from the foundation of the world, the Lamb. That's Yahweh being slain, taking on that same form. That's, that, now, let's get over there to Revelations, where they, where they overcame by the uh, how, how, how they overcame by the blood of the lamb. Can we find that? Mm -hmm. I'm just searching for it. Yeah, me too. Okay. Well, we know. Well, I think it's 12. 12. Yeah, yep, 12. 12 yep. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Now wait a minute, Yahshua. This is before Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. So, so, so Yahweh, from the vision, we find out that Yahweh was the Lamb when He took on that same form. That was the crucifixion. See, and He shed His blood right there, but it wasn't physical blood. You see, it's spiritual. Everything is natural. It's to what Yahweh did in the flesh. He had did in the spirit. But see, Yahweh was salvation before He even took on the same form. It was he just didn't manifest it. <laughs> you see, he took on that shit when he when Yahweh, when they seen Yahweh Elohim at top of Mount Sinai, that vision, that was Yahweh Elohim, that was salvation. But why, why didn't he say, well, they seen Yahshua? Because he wasn't his salvation wasn't available. See, salvation, let's get over there in, in the footings of time. Uh can we find in the footing of time he sent forth his son? In the footing of time, and we know what the footings of time is was on the fourth thousand year. See. That's when salvation came available. Not the same Yahweh, but see, he wasn't, he didn't, he, uh, salvation, he didn't, he, he wasn't. So in other words, when the children of Israel seen Yahweh as Elohim, he didn't, they, he didn't say uh, Yahshua for the simple fact he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't given salvation at the it. time. You understand? Okay, you got it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, Elohim sent forth his son, or Yahweh sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Right. Now it says Yahweh sent forth his son. But we know that Yahweh sent himself. You see, we, we've been, he, we, we, we prove that all the time. Right. So. So it says that because it's the, see this this vision revelation the things that's in that Bible don't mean it, it they didn't make sense until we got the vision revelation 
all that, all that stuff was, it sounds it's contradictory. But once the vision revelation, it clears all that up. It's, that's why the world can't understand it because they don't, they don't know nothing about the divine vision revelation that was given to Dr. Kennedy. So salvation was not available at the time that he gave the new, the old covenant. You see, the old covenant, they, he gave, Yahshua gave him the name Yahweh. We know mm -hmm. who gave him that name. We mm -hmm. might, we might, we should know who gave, we, we should know who was down there and came down to deliver the people. And it's all, we always say, if, go, can we read over there and say Yahweh would deliver his people, deliver, Yahweh delivered the people out of uh, land of Egypt? It says Yahweh, but we know who it was. It was Yahshua, but it's, see, he wasn't salvation. He wasn't given salvation then. That's the reason he didn't tell Moses to write Yahshua, see. Moses knew he was Joshua, but he didn't tell him. He told he when he he wrote he wrote Yahweh, but, but see Moses did, really Moses didn't write nothing. Joshua wrote everything. He 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 wrote everything. He just used vessels. See, he, it's the same thing now. He just using vessels. We just vessels. He's I ask your ayah. See, Joshua wrote Joshua wrote that whole scripture. He the only see Joshua said um um what Yahweh he he uh. What is it? Say Yahweh uh, was Yah would make Yahweh special because he declared the end from the beginning. Can we get that, please? Um, um, I know I'm, I'm not quoting it, uh, exactly the way it's written. It, it might be Exodus 19 and 4. Uh, it says, uh, he no one beside no one beside him, he declared the end. No, from the beginning. You wanted it to say where Yahweh is delivered them, right? Yeah, get that first. Um, I'm not sure where that is exactly. Well, we know what you, we 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 heard it that it, it, it always it's in a couple Yahweh. places actually. When right. I looked that up, it a whole my bunch point of things. I'm making it, it, it never mm -hmm. said Joshua, and we wouldn't right. know it was Joshua. It wasn't for the divine vision revelation. It said Yahweh. Why? Because salvation was not was not available. You see, it was there. Yah Yahweh has always been salvation. He's the only salvation. But he he used that that see, that name is so special. Yahshua. It's, that name is so special because it was it was it's for a point in time. You see, that point in time was on, on the fourth, on the fourth, the fullness of time come. That was see Yahshua when he when he came in, you know, he was he was ending everything natural. <laughs> as far as Yahweh was concerned, the natural was over with. He was putting the end to everything natural. You see, it just hadn't manifest yet. He he was that was Yahshua's job to get rid of everything natural. Cause because what's coming up. Ain't gonna be no natural. So he 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 ended it. It just ain't manifest yet. And, and, and he's learning. That's what he's that's what he's learning us because uh to, to try to get off the natural. But my point. So Yahweh is salvation, but it wasn't even even when uh um. So and let, let's go over there. Uh, uh, uh what he said. I was a new covenant. Where is, is that Jeremiah? Mm -hmm. Or not Jeremiah? Uh, what is it? The old the new covenant. I'll make a new covenant. That's Jeremiah, right? 31, 31. Yep. Yeah. Can we get that, yep. please? Yep. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, wait a minute. Who, who made the old covenant? <laughs> See, it's a new covenant. See, the same one made the old, the new covenant, the same one make, the same one that made the old covenant. The same one. Is the same one making a new covenant. So Yahshua, so Yahweh is pure spirit. And he, everything that he does, he do it through Yahweh on him, who is Yahshua. He, what, that's when Dr. Tilly said, when he took on that same form, when he said he went out to create business, because he was doing all the creating through it, that was still Yahweh doing the creating, but not in that pure spirit state, you see. That's, see, he did, he, everything is done through Yahshua. See, that's why the only way to salvation is through Yahshua. You, you, you got to know that Yahshua. You, you, we cannot go straight to Yahweh and have salvation. I'm sorry, it's not going. It's not. It, 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 if you do, you go. You, 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 you can't bypass the Lamb. You see, you can't bypass that his sacrifice that he that he sacrificed. See, that Yahweh didn't sacrifice his son for for nothing. See, he sacrificed his son, so we have to go through Yahshua in order to have salvation. I, I think with that, I'm going to say thank you and all praise go to Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think you could have kept going, Tony. That was pretty good. Hmm. Our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Simmons.
you, you kind of cut out a little bit. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes. yep. Good evening. Um, as always, you know, uh, it's good to have something to say. <clears throat> um, definitely all praise be to Yahweh, all him through Yahshua the Messiah. I appreciate um, and, and uh, enjoy the comments uh, of the first speaker and the prayer that was given, um, you know, and um, like like Chuck put it in the prayer, you know, or Yahshua through Chuck, you know, it's the, it's the knowledge, um, you know, we're should be so great grateful for because <clears throat> the world is without it and that that knowledge or that uh revealing or opening our eyes so that we can understand something about Yahweh that's that's the most important thing going on right now and um you know it's it's so beautiful and this gospel is so beautiful and you know I, we just can't get enough of it everything continues to line up you know, just like Tony said, to the jot, to the to the tittle. You know, everything lines up, and it's and it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> but just seeing people out here in this world, uh, you know, like it says, you know, could I get the scripture where it says, you know, for they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is, though, Pam. Yeah, I'm just um, checking for that. I'm not sure you sorry about that. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, so it's Romans 10 and 2. Mm -hmm. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Right. And this is Paul speaking. And this is him, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit and examining these people and 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 he's bearing <clears throat> excuse me he's bearing record that they have a zeal of Yahweh but not according to knowledge and and it's been that way ever since back with the the um golden you no know, as soon as they brought was brought out of Egypt and all these you know miracles that they saw to to rescue them you know still getting forth you know um, still, uh, they had a zeal of, 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 of what God was or what their creator was, but it wasn't according to knowledge, you know, and we see that still to this very day. <clears throat> we see, we see that still to this very day. And can we get, um, I believe it is John 17 and one mm -hmm. eternal life is to know. Yep. John 17 and one. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. That they might know <clears throat> that this, you know, this is Yahshua saying that life eternal is to know. So that's why it's important to have that knowledge, you know. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, it has to be revealed by, by Yahshua. You know, we could talk to people and we can, you know, I do my, my best to you know, within the confines of my job and such to talk to people and try to preach this gospel to people that I see, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it, it has to make a change in you. A, a change has to take place in you and you have to bring on and and uh, and have those nine divine attributes within you, you know what I mean? And just, um, but the people know, you know, they know these things. You know, they know about the tetragrammaton, they know about the, the four letters, you know, and that's where they get mixed up or tripped up at as to how <clears throat> you, you can figure the name is Yahweh, you know. And so then you break it down to them about the consonants and the vowels. And, you know, uh, you tell them about how Yahweh is both masculine and feminine and, and his name is, is both masculine and feminine and pointing out how Adam was the first man and from Adam came the first 
female or, or, or woman, which her name, his name was Adam, her name was Eve. And those are two, two uh, vowels that need to be, you know, used to pronounce a name, you know? And so, but, and then just lining it up about, you know, how Yahshua said it himself, I come in my father's name. And so when you line up <clears throat> Yah and Yah, Yahweh and Yahshua, you can see the resemblance there. Um, you know, and it's just, it's power in that name. Um, and I'm just, you know, lucky to have been revealed, you know, these things and to continue in studying and to study diligently. And we know that Yahweh rewards those that diligently seek him. And so that's what I'm trying to do, you know. Uh, and as for me and my house, we're going to serve Yahweh. And that's just <clears throat> how I'm living my life right now. And, and uh, you know, he continues to bless me. He continues to open up doors for me. He, can, he continues to show me love and, and, and uh, you know, his attributes through vessels, you know. And it's just, <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad to be in, in um able, like I say, to know anything about him, but all praises uh, go to Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, and um, that's really all I had had to say. Thank you for the opportunity. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Scott. Our next speaker will be Dr. Sarah Thomas from Green Bay, Wisconsin class, and our honorary Tampa class member. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, you just never know what you're going to say, I guess, when you get called. But I guess what I would want to talk a little bit about, um, I mentioned this at the Green Bay class uh, earlier, but I didn't talk about this part of it. Some Baptists came over to the house when we were cleaning the yard, and they had a visit with us. Mm -hmm. um so they wanted to talk to us about their beliefs and it was an older lady named Shirley and she said um you know so have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart have you admitted you're a sinner and have you accepted Jesus into your heart so you can be saved and I said well Shirley the thing is we don't believe the Messiah's name was Jesus we believe his name was Yahshua um so there's that I said, <laughs> you know what I, mean? like I was trying to be nice because I live in a really small town. You know, there's 800 people in the town where we live. I, I walk to school where I work. I've taught there for 15 years in this tiny town. You don't necessarily want people in a small town to know that you have a different religion than they think you have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not that I was um, going to hold my tongue, but I was, I'm extremely, I was trying to be very diplomatic with this lady on top of it. Her family lives next door to us. They bought the house right next door to us. And, um, they're continually bringing over like cookies and invitations to go to their church. And, uh, we're continually not going to the church, but whatever. <laughs> you know, mostly because it's like during the COVID and I don't really want to go places during the COVID, but also, um, I mean, man, I've been, that's really no excuse, but I've been to a lot of churches in my time and I, you know, they all pretty much say the same thing, you know? So anyway, I have this late, nice conversation with Shirley and she says to me, I think it's okay if you, if you're going to say it to Yahshua, because he has many names. And that's what she said. And she, then she gave some examples. She said, he's called the door and he's called the lamb and he's called the king of kings. And Matt in the background, Matt's not diplomatic. He's a very <laughs> nice person, but he's not. You know? So he's like, well, those are titles. And I'm like, yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. It's fine. You know, and, but it's not like I backed down, but at the same time, I didn't, I didn't want to lambaste this woman. And then Matt, of course, is just like this chart he has on here. He's like, what nationality was the Messiah, you know? And, uh, Shirley's like well and he's like Jewish you know <laughs> just no <laughs> no holding back and he's like and there was no letter J and this Shirley lady had a couple of young girls with with her probably high school age girls um don't go to school where I teach their homeschooled kids and this group of Baptists they wear um the women wear skirts and they don't wear they don't own property like it's like very strict with the ladies 
but uh, nice folks, but not, you know, mm-hmm. not necessarily. Um, I mean, they're following like physical laws is what I'm trying to say with that example. They're not, they're like, if we do these things, if we ask Jesus into our heart, if we do this thing, we're going to be saved. Mm-hmm. And that's just not what we believe. In fact, you know, we don't believe that, uh, you know, if you're not, if you're not <laughs> meant to have Yahshua within you, it's not like you can muscle your way into it. You can't force Yahshua to pour the Holy Spirit out on you just because you say, I'm a sinner and come into my heart. It's like, you can't boss the boss, I guess. Is what, you know? <laughs> so anyway, but then, um, whatever. So they left after about an hour um, and I'm Irish, so I'm in the sun and I, I was dying. I was roasting. And uh, earlier we had taken, a, I had taken an online quiz because Ruth, the neighbor brought over a online quiz. You should take it to see if you're going to heaven. And I failed it. I'm going to hell. So fine. Um, and it was all based on carnal ordinances. So I thought to myself, I know what these people believe. They believe you have to do a certain certain laws that are written in the Bible in order to earn your salvation. Um, But then when Shirley said, oh, he has many names and it would be acceptable to pray to Yahshua, that threw me for a little bit of a a loop. So um, I I don't usually do this, but I sat down and I wrote a letter to her pastor um, because I said, what's your pastor's name? (laughs) And she said, David. So I looked up the Baptist church name and I looked up the one with David as the pastor and I sent the guy a letter and uh, I made a a rough draft because I'm an English teacher. And so I still have the rough draft here, uh, but I sent the the better draft. And my first draft, which is this one, is I, I brought up the names and I brought up baptism and I brought up grace because they're Baptists and because my quiz I took had all those laws that I broke and and thus going to hell according to their their religion. And then after further reflection, I said, no, I'm going to send them just about the names because if we cannot agree on the names, (laughs) there's Mm -hmm. no reason for me to send this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that'll muddy the waters because when you're gonna have like a conversation with somebody about what you believe, maybe stick with one thing because Mm. if I brought up all the things you know it's not whatever Mm. so I send this I send this guy this letter and it basically starts with though I am happy to discuss the scriptures with people I do have a few disparities and what I heard from your members when compared with the scriptures they shared with me and your online quiz which is called are you good enough to go to heaven uh no no you're not um Though your member mentioned that all I needed to do to be saved by grace is to call on the Lord Jesus Christ and pray to accept him into my life. When I admitted that I do not believe the Messiah's name was Jesus, she said it was acceptable in the Baptist church to pray in the name of Yahshua to be saved. I don't think that your church is willing to accept the name of Yahshua in place of the name of Jesus. And I wasn't being mean. Like, I just literally, I was like, that's false. Like, I don't believe that's true. Mm -hmm. And I said, I might be mistaken, but I am basing this on past experience with various uh, Christian groups. So I I just, you know, and then I went through and I, I, I wrote the reasons I believe the name's important. And I included some information that you have on this, you know, on the chart about how, um, maybe not this specific chart, but I did include the no J in Hebrew, Greek, or Latin, um, no J in English until 1400 to 1600 years after the Messiah's death. And then I also included information about how the name had been changed over time from Hebrew to Greek to Latin. And then eventually like how, how the name Jesus like kind of came to be historically speaking. And then kind of just ended it with like, you know, thank you for encouraging your members to share their beliefs with people. And I didn't, I enjoyed the conversation, but you know, I, 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 there are some great differences between what I believe and what you believe. And I nailed the letter. And then much to my surprise, a week later, um, we get a knock on the door like I said, small town. And uh, (laughs) here's the pastor, David, 
and his friend, other pastor. So they brought two guys. And my kids, of course, are like, people are here. People are here, you know, because people don't, we live far away from everybody. People are here to see you. So I go out and here I'm talking to this pastor. So I, I spoke with him and the other, the two pastor guys for like an hour and a half. They did not want to stay on the names. They wanted to talk about the Godhead. They wanted to talk about the covenants that, and they wanted to talk about, they believe that by grace you are saved. Um, but, you know, I kept coming back to the, the names because like I said, if we weren't going to come to an accord on the names, it wasn't going to happen. You know, it just, that just, if you can't accept the names, it is very hard to understand anything else about this gospel because the names, even just look at this chart, the names help you understand things like the Godhead. Mm -hmm. The names help you understand the operation of his purpose. Mm -hmm. The names help you understand, like, what does it mean to be obedient to his thoughts and they're not your thoughts? You know, so there's a lot with the names and the meaning behind the names. And the names are extremely important, as I know that you guys all know. But this guy says to me, he said, and he was also very nice. Like, I don't want to paint him as a mean person. We had a very good dialogue back and forth. Um, and Matt was there too. He comes out. And I was pr pretty glad because, like I said, women are wearing skirts, bringing cookies over to my house and not really owning property. So how much of a voice would they respect of a woman? I didn't know, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, But luckily, I know scriptures. <laughs> so they're like, well, what about Romans 8? And I was like, oh, to be carnally minded, you know, and they use the same Bible, the King James. So the fact that I could quote scriptures gave me some credibility in their mind. And that's why I think the conversation went for as long as it did. But anyway, he said, this pastor said, you know, you're so focused on one word, that name, but how can you be, say that one word is so important and not all the words in the Bible? You know, it was kind of like what he was saying. Hmm. So he was, his point was, you're hung up on one word, in this case, Yahshua. Um, but what about the whole Bible? Like you can't, it says Jesus in the English version of the Bible. Do you think God was wrong? Was his, his gist? Because if God didn't want Jesus to be in there, then why would it be in there? You know, how could the Bible be wrong? That's the word of God. And of course, at that point, then I strayed a little from the names and I was like, you know, there are contradictions in there. And it talks about how Yahweh, no man has seen God at any time. And then in another spot, it talks about how 74 people saw God. And you take the names out of there, the names that you're saying, you know, this one word's not that important, and it hampers your understanding. How can that say that and be wrong? Like, it can't be. You know, and then he was like, oh, I think the devil uh, put that in there. I was like, okay, yes. <laughs> but... Then that goes against the whole idea that if God didn't want Jesus in the Bible, why wouldn't he have it in there? You know, so whatever. Mm -hmm. So we talked to each other for a long time. Turns out David is the son of Shirley, the woman who came over and visited me, and the father of my neighbor guy here next door. <laughs> so like this is the whole family of these Baptists. And uh, my kids are like, oh my God, they're all hiding in the playroom playing Legos and listening to us talk with this gentleman about the Godhead and grace and the names and stuff. And when it came down to it, it's just his, this was the number one witness. So here he said here, I'm going to tell you the number one reason or the number one witness that what I'm saying is right. And this is David, the pastor's number one witness about why he was right. He said, I have brought people into my church, the Baptist church, and it has changed their life. Their lives were, are now different compared to when they started going to my church. And now they go to my church and it has changed their life. And that's his number one witness. So I was thinking about this. And, you know, we all have personal witnesses about this gospel, you know. And I've had times in my life where a personal witness was just so profound to me. But I could just be making it up. I could just be lying through my teeth and saying that I realized something or something happened to me. You would not have to believe me at all. 
it's when we use evidence from the scriptures, the law and the prophets, it's when we use evidence that lines up with the tabernacle, that we can actually prove it. It's not just, I see that somebody is different from when they started going to my church. You know what? I'm different, completely different from when I started being a, a teacher at my school where I work. And, and now, mm -hmm. like, I have a different language I use. I have different habits. Um, I have a different knowledge base. And so that has changed me in my personality to a point, you know, and also like, I don't know, having kids has changed me and, right. you know, you go on a vacation somewhere and that can change you as a person too, but those are just physical things. Mm -hmm. And just because somebody says, now I went to this church and I feel like a different person. Yeah, but do you know anything? Like, do you know your creator anymore? Then when you, you know, started going, you know, and so it was actually a good exercise for me because at, because I'm a public school teacher, I don't ever talk about religion to anybody mm -hmm. um, at school or at work because it's just like a big taboo. And also I believe in the separation of church and state as a personal um, philosophy. <laughs> like I don't believe in influencing my students, you know, Mm -hmm. religiously speaking at all right. um and then who else do I see Matt my husband's in class and my kids go to class my in-laws are in class thankfully and then other than that there's nobody like I have nobody else in my life it's class people my family and then people I work with so the fact that I could take the time and write this letter to this guy and then he came right to my house to have a big long um, conversation, it helped me understand his his point of view better, and it made me think of the aim that says that we're down here with, um, you know, to like studying comparative religions. Mm -hmm. We don't study comparative religions so that we can become Baptist or we can become Jewish or Muslim. We study comparative religions so that we can have a contrast. We can have a contrast to the doctrine that we understand and believe in and have witnesses for. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that situation, talking to this guy. And a lot of times during that conversation, I really felt like Yashua was just pulling those scriptures out of my memory and just putting them in the forefront of my mind. So mm -hmm. um, I had something to contend with with this guy. Um, you know, and in the end, we did not come to any accord between each other but it didn't matter because I know that when he said it is one word more important than the words I know that I have walked through them scriptures like for how many years and found examples of him saying I'm doing this for my namesake my name will be continued as long as the sun my name will be continued for all generations you know I'm a jealous Elohim and I'm not gonna give honor to any other name and even in the scripture tonight about how you know yash was um you know deserves that glory that name is so so important just like the first speaker said and so i guess i would say the words in the book confirm the fact that the name is vitally important to him and he deserves all the glory of uh, that of his name and he deserves that respect because he says his name's important and his name Yahshua fits the whole purpose of the creation the part of him that he wants to reveal to us that he is salvation and I mean that is worth all those words in the book that show those principles that you can run all the way through so thanks for the time thank you Hallelujah, that was really good. Um, our next speaker will be Dr. Latara Burley. All right, good evening. <laughs> uh, good evening. It is definitely a pleasure to have anything to say about this great gospel that Yahweh has given us through his son, Yahshua. And um, I, I enjoyed what the previous speakers got into. And, um, you know, going back to the foundation when, you know, they were talking about the name, 
And I definitely agree that you can't understand anything about this gospel. You can't understand, you know, anything, even the words, if you don't have the name right. Because like she was saying, the name does reveal the purpose. And the name shows, if you don't understand the names, how can you understand the Godhead? And if you don't understand the Godhead, you don't understand the tabernacle pattern because the tabernacle pattern shows forth the Godhead, <laughs> which is, you know, the tabernacle pattern is everything, you know, created in the universe. But, you know, who revealed that tabernacle pattern? It was Elohim. But you have to know... <laughs> who Elohim is. And so it's so vitally important. And I don't, you know, think people understand how important it is. And it seems so simple, you know, to, you know, the world like, oh, no, that can't be true. That's, that's too simple. It's too easy. But the simple things that y'all always said that he will use the simple things to conform the wise. And so, you, you know, in the scripture also talking about, you know, how people you know, profess themselves to being wise, but showing that they are fools because you have to come to a knowledge. You don't even know that you don't know that you're basically, you're a fool in Yahweh's eyes because you don't know anything about the creator. And it takes the creator himself to reveal this thing to you. And I was listening to what Sarah was saying. She was saying, is that one word more important than the words? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> because if you don't understand that one word, you will not understand nothing in these in the Bible. You will not understand nothing in these scriptures because you mm -hmm. cannot get a grasp of this one particular word. And it and and they caught up on this one word, but this one word is is revealing every single thing the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity he literally is revealing everything yahweh's name is he who causes to exist yahweh has is is manif manifesting himself in so many different ways but you don't understand yahweh because you you're not except well it takes the holy spirit which is Joshua in order for you to be able to see these things and um going back to you know that foundation and and how you know that romans 119 and 20 how you know understanding yahweh is you you have to see or you have to be able to see those things that he has made in order for him to un in order for you to understand him but it doesn't come by you just, you know, reading up on it. it. Doesn't come by you studying up on it. And when they were talking about you accepting Jesus, if you accept Jesus in your life and you know you are saved and stuff like that, like you can accept him. The scripture talks about how you know they rejected him. You know, that he he is rejected of all men. You know, you can't, like she was saying, you can't pray your way. You can't boss the boss. You can't pray your way into heaven. It has to be, you has to um, be revealed to you by Yahweh, by the boss. And so let's, let's go to, um, let's just pick it up in Romans 1, 19 and 20, because it's so important because you not, you're rejecting, when you reject the truth, you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and so they, they think that they are doing something wise. And Paul, when in even scripture, Paul talks about how, um, I think we, we, we just got it, how um, he bare record. He, he knew because he was out there doing the same thing they were doing. He was the one that was killing the assembly, thinking that he was doing something right, you know, um, by Yahweh, or by God. And so the same thing is going on now. They think that they're doing something right by trying to keep the Ten Commandment laws, by trying to, you know, keep the Lord's suppers, by trying to go out and, um, you know, knocking on doors and telling people, have you accepted Jesus Christ in your life? In their minds, they think that that's what they're supposed to do. 
But y'all, but Paul talks about he bearing record and Yahweh used Paul because he was his witness because Paul was the one that was out there doing it. That was, um, you know, putting people that were in jail who was preaching the gospel. But Paul said they have a zeal of Yahweh, but it wasn't according to knowledge. They had no knowledge of what they were doing. And it, like the same thing is going on now. People are walking around. They, they thinking that, you know, they can work their way up to salvation or work their way up to heaven or pay their way into heaven. And that's just not how it is. It is by grace, but it's according to Yahshua said, um, and I know I'm going all, all over the place, but in the scripture, he said that he has revealed the name unto them who Yahweh gave. So Yahweh had to give Yahshua the names of the sons that Yahshua is going to reveal to. You can't go up to Yahshua, go up to Jesus and say, oh, I want to be saved, save me. You don't even know that you need a salvation. You don't even know that you need a savior. It has to be revealed to you. And going back to, to Revelations, you know, I'm, I'm just going to like reiterate when it says that Satan deceived the whole world. That's, that's everybody that was born. Every, every single person Satan has deceived. You, we were so indoctrinated that we didn't even know that we were being deceived. And so we had to come down here and be taught the names be taught the Godhead, you know, be taught the tabernacle pattern in order for us to wake up and realize that we were deceived. And so when you reject the gospel after, be, after it's being presented to you and we have told you that you have been deceived and we've shown you the truth and you reject the truth, you know, Yahweh has a problem with that. And because it says, get it, get it in Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans 1, 19, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Right. So. Yahweh, <laughs> he is saying they are without excuse because Yahweh couldn't send anybody to the lake if he hadn't, you know, given them a way of understanding these things. So the scripture is saying anything that can make may be had by uh, anything that is known of Yahweh has been made and is manifest. He, his eternal power, his supernal nature. So that's the Godhead that what they're talking about. Not understanding the Godhead, all this Trinitarian, you know, concept that they have that is not even in the scriptures. That's a man-made concept. You can understand something, but it's by a revelation. It's by the Holy Spirit that you'll be able to understand it. It's not by your own, you can't study up. It's not by your own understanding. Because like I said, all of us were deceived, so we didn't even know. It says, so that they are without excuse. Keep, keep reading. Keep reading there in Romans. Yeah, keep reading. 21, because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh, neither were thankful, mm -hmm. but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish right. heart was so, darkened. I'm sorry. So look, listen to that. Being vain in their imaginations. And so we can understand and we can see how even now, today, what vain imaginations that, you know, all these different religions and all these different churches come up with as to how you're supposed to be saved. Yahweh saying that they become vain in their imaginations, empty, worthless, void of understanding, rejecting the truth and having no knowledge. 
read. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Mm -hmm. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible Yahweh into an image made like to corruptible man. And right. And so I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. No, no um, problem. So, you know, almost every religion that we have seen or known of, I don't know, maybe I can't be, I can't be wrong, but I don't know of one religion that doesn't have like a statue or a picture or something of their God that they worship. Just like the children of Israel back then, they, um, built that golden calf and saying this be the God that took us out of the land of Egypt. Well, the same thing going on now, but the name, like she was talking about that letter J, that name was Jesus, you know, Yahweh is spirit. Yahweh is pure spirit. And so there, there is no, you can't understand spirit. And so you can't make an image or a, a idol of Yahweh, but there is one of Jesus. There's one of Mary. <laughs> There's one of a lot of the, the, I don't know, the Roman Catholics. They have a lot of saints that they've, you know, glorified. And it's a whole bunch of saints. <laughs> Saint Paul and Saint this and Saint that. Mm -hmm. Read. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor. So see, look what Yahweh does. I'm sorry. So look what Yahweh do. So when mm -hmm. you reject the truth and you reject Yahweh, and you know, like she was saying, how they was talking about it, Yahweh has many. Oh, Yahweh has many names. God has many names. No, God is not a name. God is a title. But here is saying. For Yahweh gave them up. Read that. Um, wherefore Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie mm -hmm. and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator mm -hmm. was blessed forever. So listen to the words with because this Romans 119, I know we always get that one, but I like to keep reading for keep reading down because it's a <laughs> lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot in here. And this is just showing how, and I, I don't think they keep reading, you know, these, I don't even think they read these scriptures as saying, you know, they always talk about um, you know, God is good and stuff like that. God is good. And somebody say, Oh, God is good all the time. But <laughs> you don't want to talk about the wrath of Yahweh. You don't want to talk about, you know, um, those curses that just back in, like with the children of Israel, you know, Yahweh said he will bless them if they do these things. But he did say that he will go, he was going to curse them also if they did not do those things. But see, Yahweh here he said he gave them up and cha who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worship the creature more than the creator. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to, we don't want to worship, be like the churches out here, physical or, you know, idols or anything like that, because we understand now that Yahweh is pure spirit and that we can't understand anything about him. It's only through Elohim who, you know, took on shape, Yahweh took on shape and form as Elohim. And then, you know, being understood through the law and the prophets, through visions and, and revelations. That's how we're able to understand Yahweh and to worship Yahweh. Read. Okay, I'm trying to remember where I was. Okay, um, 26. For this cause, Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, okay. also the men. Well, drop down to 28. 28. And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. Okay, Paul. So right there, it says, even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. So we understand why. Do you understand why it's so important to go over the same things over and over again? Because here it's saying that you have to retain Yahweh 
retain. And how do you retain something? You have to repeat it over and over again to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. Okay, so having knowledge of Yahweh, coming to class, reading the scriptures, going over the same thing over and over again. That's mm -hmm. how you keep in, in repetition retaining something and having knowledge about something. Keep going. Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, mm -hmm. being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness. All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All of that. Backbiters, all of that. You don't have to read all of it. But it says, in the end, the 31, it says, without understanding, without understanding. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to be without understanding. Oh, this, that's because we, when you don't have, that's John 17 and one. Let's get that. I got it. Okay. John 17 and one. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you has given as you have given him. Mm -hmm. The son is going to give eternal life to as many as the father, Yahweh, has given him. He's the, the father is glorifying the son so that the son is glorifying him. They are one. Again, it's going back to the Godhead. <laughs> And going mm -hmm. back to why that name is so important, because if you don't understand that name or anything of that name, you're not going to understand the Godhead. You're not going to understand the purpose of Yahweh. Read. Three, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. The only true Elohim. So he's telling you what eternal life is, is to know. To know him and to have knowledge that he is eternal life, the only true L. So going back to, you know, the scripture 31, where it says, without understanding, covet breakers, without natural affection, you know, all of that. And then it talks about um, if you keep going and keep reading and go to um, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it goes it goes into a more um depth can you just pick it up just keep reading there yeah do you want me to start down in two mm -hmm. okay romans two and one therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever mm -hmm. thou art that judgest for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doest the same things right so when when <laughs> When they talk about those covenants, right? And they talk about the, you should keep the 10 commandments and the thou shall this and the thou shall that and, and things, and that's your salvation. Well, the scripture, when it goes on here and it talks about how, you know, you are in, it says, thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, you condemn yourself. Mm -hmm. So how can you walk around and say, you know, you can, thou shall not uh, kill or steal or lie, whatever. You condemning yourself, putting judgment on somebody else. And that's what the whole world is doing. They're trying to keep those 10 commandments. They're trying to keep those covenants, but it's, it's a witness against themselves. Read. But we are sure that the judgment of Yahweh is according to truth against them, which commit such things. Mm -hmm. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them, which do such things and do us the same that thou mm -hmm. shalt escape the judgment of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And so they tell you not to do something and follow this. And, you know, th this is how you can be saved and this your salvation. And they do the same thing. They tell you not to do. We drop down to, um, there's so much in here. Um, <laughs> drop down to five. Five, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself. Heart. Mm -hmm. After that hardness and impenitent heart, and we talked about how Yahweh is going to um, circumcise that heart, we're talking about a circumcision, how he's going to take that hardness away from that heart. And let us get that scripture, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. 
set Thessalonians. Um. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for it real quick here. Um, okay, that is, um, Deut it's actually in Deuteronomy 10 and 16. Mm -hmm. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. Mm hmm. So it says, and be no more stiff necked. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. But it says, but, and then go back to um, five. Okay. That second chapter. Sure. Romans two and five. But after thy hardness, an impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yahweh, mm -hmm, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Keep reading. Who, who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So but we seek to glory. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So we seek to glory and honor and immortality eternal life that's what we do and that's the the tenth aim to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of yashua messiah but it says by whom by patience we do this continually we seek in yahweh continually so it's not just a one-time thing where you say oh i can come to class oh i heard the names yeah i got it no it talks about how you have to retain yahweh in your knowledge and your understanding. So it has to be repeated over and over again because Yahweh does not change. Read. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, mm -hmm. but, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, mm -hmm. tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Now listen to what it's saying here. Now who is they, who, who are they talking about? They said to every man, tribulation anguish upon every soul but it says to who it said to the jew first <laughs> and then it said unto also unto every nation so it doesn't matter who who it is you know if you think you're special or you know if, if you think you're going to church well i'm a child of god you know god's blessed me whatever whatever but he said to the jew first and unto all nations unto every nation read uh-huh. But, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to mm -hmm. the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. Right. So Yahweh don't care who you are. <laughs> you know, he it says, but there is no respect of persons of Yahweh, whether you retain knowledge or not. Yahweh does not have respect of person. And so we have to be careful about that, thinking because we're in class that we're good. Oh, oh, I'm okay. Well, I'm at, no, if you're still in class, obviously it's the reason why we still need this. We haven't gotten it all. We still have to come to class for whatever purpose Yahweh have you coming to class. Read. Mm -hmm. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Right. So as many as should sin in the law listen to this it said you're going to be judged by that same law so rather you're in class whether you're out class out of class whether you know you know the truth or don't know the truth all of us are on the same playing field we're going to be judged by that law keep going for not the hearers of the law are just before yahweh but the doers of the law shall be justified right so it's for, it's, when you're talking about <laughs> And that's why it's important for you to know for yourself, because just sitting in here, listening and hearing somebody preach and you're not going checking it out. You're just as saying you're just as guilty as the, the people sitting up in church because they don't check out anything what anybody else said. And we don't do that down here. Dr. Kinley said, what did he Dr. Kinley say to make him prove it until you are satisfied? The scripture also talks about searching the scriptures and 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 to see if those things are so. Not just to sit in here and just to hear something and, oh, I got it. No, mm -hmm. you have to hear it. But it says the doers, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Keep going. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, 
these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Mm -hmm. Excusing one another of those things. Read. In the day when Yahweh shall judge the secrets of men by Yahshua the Messiah, according to my gospel. Mm -hmm. Keep drop down to the 20. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou so you teach oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt. Read that again. Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Mm -hmm. Thou that preachest a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? Does thou steal? This is Paul writing. Paul is writing this to them. So you, you're preaching something to somebody else, but do you do it? Mm -hmm. Are you being a hypocrite of this? You preaching something, thou shalt not steal, but do you steal? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Mm-hmm. Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Mm-hmm. Thou that make us... Um, mm -hmm. Go, keep on. Um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Keep going? Yep, keep going. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou Yahweh? For the mm -hmm. name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Mm -hmm. And it is written. And it is written. And so when you're talking about, you know, that law and, and trying to put commandments and laws and ordinances on people, are you, when you judge somebody and, you know, this is what the world does. And even some people in class, you know, telling them, oh, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Well, you're a witness against yourself because do you do the same thing that you're telling someone else not to do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's saying, do you do it yourself? You know, do you do you steal? Do you commit adultery? Do you do this? That same law, it says that Yahweh has no respect to person. So it said to the Jew first and then to the other nations and to the Gentiles. And so we have to be careful, you know, because like I said, Yahweh is not, is, is not just all love and, and hunky dory. You know, hunky dory just talks about Yahweh's wrath and how, you know, that law, which is the Yahshua Messiah, is going to judge the whole world. Go over and get um, James the second, get James 2 and 10. Okay. And just start reading from there. James two. I just thought this was just, I, I just thought like this just stood out a lot because when you read this chapter here, it just speaks so much as to what we were doing and what the world still is doing now. When we talks about the law, everybody want to, you know, put a law on somebody. Everybody want to try to keep uh, 10 commandments or do this and do that. But it's, it's talking about right here is you, you a law against yourself. When you, when you try to do those things, we can't keep it. That's the whole point. If we were able to keep it, then there was no purpose of Yahshua coming in, dying on the cross, you know, resurrecting. He, the whole purpose is Yahweh is salvation. But like she was talking about from the beginning, you can't know that if you don't know right from the foundation, the name, if you don't know Yahweh, if you don't know the Godhead. So if you don't know these things, you're going to be, uh, you're going to make up your own laws. You're going to go, you know, with your own righteousness, you know, in your own imaginations. Um, yeah, go, go over, yeah, get James 2 and 10 and start reading. Okay, James 2, 10. For whoever, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty mm -hmm. of all. Right. So if you, if you thinking that you're something special, oh, cause you judge someone else and you know, a, a lot of people do this. Well, I don't still, oh, I'm not a homo. That's the big one. Homosexuality. You know, I'm not homosexual. Everybody say, oh, that's an abomination against God, you know, homosexuality. But do you cheat? Mm -hmm. You know, do you lie? <laughs> do you, you know, are you an adulterer? You know, is scripture talking about none of us is righteous, but if you broke one of them, then you broke all of them. Mm -hmm. So you are guilty of all. Keep going. 11, for he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Mm -hmm. 
The no. same one who said don't commit adultery said do not kill. <laughs> He's not a separate guy. He's the same one. Read. Now, if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you are become a transgressor of the law. Mm-hmm. So when they walk around talking, talking about um, trying to keep that law and, and putting those things on you, you, you a transgressor of the law. And you just, like I said, you're just a witness against you. You're just telling on yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the whole purpose of Yahshua coming down because mm -hmm. he said that he came to fulfill those things, that you wouldn't have to try to keep the law. The children of Israel could not keep it. Keep going, keep going, Lisa. 12, so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Mm -hmm. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Okay, thank you. So mercy rejoices against judgment. Okay, so I'm trying to, I don't know how much time I got left, but go and get Matthew 5 and 19. Matthew 5 and 19. Oh, trying to get over. Take as much time as you want. Okay, thank you. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So whosoever shall break, read that again. I'm sorry. 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. shall teach break men one of them. Mm -hmm. and shall teach men. So mm -hmm. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So going back to um, trying to keep that law, it, you know, first of all, we can't do it. The children of Israel couldn't do it. You know, even the apostles, they, it, it took Yahshua, even after he died and buried and resurrected, he had to bring it back to their remembrance to keep, to um, retain it in their knowledge that they didn't have to do those things anymore. So what makes people think that they can, you know, put a law on somebody else and tell them that thou shalt this and thou shalt that, because we've all broken it. Mm -hmm. We've all broken every, almost, I don't know about you, I haven't killed anyone, but I've broken the other ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like, if you broke, if you transgress against one, you transgress against them all. Mm -hmm. So going back to um, Exodus, let's go back to what the children of Israel, you know, and just, thinking about the mind frame that they had, how they could not keep it. There was nothing in them that would retain what Yahweh said in their knowledge. And the witness of that, when you go back to Exodus and Yahweh pulled them out of um, Egypt and, you know, they were plagued down there. They cried unto Yahweh. It says, um, Yahweh says he heard their cry. And so they cried unto Yahweh. He said that he came down to deliver them out of you know, the land of Egypt. But when they got to the uh, Red Sea and Yahweh, um, you know, bore them out on, says he bore them out on eagles' wings. And so they said a, a victory. They um, did a victory unto Yahweh. They sang a victory song. Um, is that, go to Exodus. Um, is it the, the, the 15th chapter? So let's, let's, like show the difference between, you know, it's like they're being happy in one moment and then the next moment it's like they forgot everything that Yahweh had did. Right, exactly. Uh, do you want a- uh, start, start at um, one, pick it up at 15 and one. Okay, Exodus, Exodus 15 and one. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh and spake saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously. Mm -hmm. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my Elohim, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's Elohim, and I will exalt him. 
Right. So stop right there. So right, right then and there. So the children of Israel admitted that Yahweh is his sal- is their salvation, but they didn't understand what they were talking about. They didn't understand what they were saying. He says, Yahweh is my strength and Yahweh, it, he is to become my salvation. He is my El. I mm-hmm. will sing praise unto him. Mm-hmm. My, he is my father's Elohim and I will exalt him. Drop down to six. Exodus 15 and 6, thy right hand, O Yahweh, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Mm -hmm. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Mm -hmm. Thou thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. Mm -hmm. Go to 11, because I don't want to read all of this. Go to 11. 11, who is like unto thee, O Yahweh, among Mm -hmm. the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. So they're saying all of these things, right? Yahweh just got them out of the land of Egypt. They're saying all these wonderful things about Yahweh, right? They're yep. saying that he's become our salvation. He is mm-hmm. um, their strength. They're going to praise Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Um, he is glorious in power. Uh, you know, his greatness of his excellency overthrown uh, their enemies. They're saying all these things about um, Yahweh, you know, uh, he is mighty. Who is like unto thee, O Yahweh? Sing praises unto Yahweh, right? Keep going. Yeah. Um, 12, and thou, thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestina. Right. So read re 18. 18. Yahweh shall reign forever and ever. Yahweh shall reign forever and ever. So after all of this, what they saying about Yahweh, giving him praises, glorifying him, mm-hmm. all of this right after Yahweh you know, mm-hmm. overthrew Pharaoh in that sea, overthrew his chariots, his horsemen, you know, parted the Red Sea for them. They sang praises unto Yahweh. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were happy. They glorified Yahweh, who is, you know, they say Yahweh shall reign forever and ever, right? Mm-hmm. So you would think that they they would have some type of understanding of who Yahweh is because they witnessed it, mm-hmm. right? And they and they said they confessed it out of their mouth. That's the most important thing. They confessed it this right out of their mouth, singing praises unto Yahweh. But mm-hmm. now turn the page. <laughs> turn to chapter, go to chapter 16, right? And so when you go to chapter 16, read, start at two, because we're talking about the mind of the people. And we're talking about, you know, how. You have to have something in you. You have to have Yahshua in you in order for you to get an understanding or have some type of knowledge of Yahweh. Because, you know, some people like, oh, back then I went back with the children of Israel, you know, um, I I wouldn't have done that. You know, um, we we wouldn't have sinned against Yahweh or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have anything in them. They didn't have that Holy Spirit in them. They're doing the same thing what the world is doing now. They confess with their mouth, right? They mm-hmm. sing praises unto Yahweh. But like, again, what Paul was talking about, they have a zeal. They were zealous of Yahweh, but it wasn't according to knowledge. So now when you turn over to chapter 16, right, you would think they have, they have some type of understanding of Yahweh. But now read at um, the, second cha- the second verse here. Exodus 16 and 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to Yahweh we had died by the hand, would would to Elohim we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt? Mm -hmm. When we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full? For you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Right. So now they're saying, do so now Yahweh just want to kill us. Oh my <laughs> so God. Yahweh just going to bring us out here to kill us. Right. But, oh, 
Y'all would just let y'all escape from Pharaoh and his chariots, right? Mm -hmm. But now they're complaining. Y'all would just want to bring us out to kill us. Mm -hmm. So now drop, drop down to five. Five, and it came to pass that on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring it. Well, in four, he talks about the manna that he's going to rain bread. So in five, he said, you shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Mm hmm and Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at even, then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out from the land of Egypt. Right. So now, wait a minute. But Yahweh already brought them out of the land of Egypt and they already knew. And they sang praises unto Yahweh for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. they got it. Right. Everything is good. They don't need to complain no more. They don't need to murmur anymore. But now they're going through. They're hungry now. Mm -hmm. So now this is another tribulation that they have, the children of Israel have. But now but then they forgot about Yahweh. So now they didn't remember Yahweh that just brought them out of the land of Egypt. Now um, keep going here. Uh, seven, and in the morning, then sh you shall see the glory of Yahweh. For that he, hear he, he heareth your murmurings against Yahweh, and what are we that you murmur against us? Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful. <laughs> you got to be careful when murmuring against Yahweh. Read. And Moses said, this shall be when Yahweh shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. And in the morning, bread to, f to the full. For that Yahweh heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against but Yahweh. Yahweh, right. So when they, when they think that they're talking against Moses and Aaron, they're not talking against Moses and Aaron. They're talking against Yahweh. So when, you know, uh, like when Sarah was talking about, you know, how they came unto her and, and of course it was nice that, you know, they didn't get into a scuffle, but a lot of times that's not so. A lot of times, you know, they, they will murmur against what you have to say or against this gospel. They're murmuring against the name. Right here, they was murmuring against the name. They glorified Yahweh, but they didn't retain Yahweh. They, they didn't have anything in them to retain the knowledge of Yahweh. And they said that Yahweh will be my salvation, but it wasn't time yet. That Holy Spirit was not poured out yet unto them in order for them to have that, to be sealed in that Holy Spirit. So when you talk about like the the people and, and, and the world and what's going on now and how, you know, they're trying to have people to, to continue to do those ordinances and, and do um, the Ten Commandments and thou shalt this and thou shalt that. They don't have anything in them to keep, to, to, to have a, a knowledge of Yahweh, to, to have that knowledge of what it was the whole purpose of Yahweh and get uh let's just go and get um matthew is it matthew uh is it five and 17 oh yeah i think i have that that's um i'm not come to destroy the law and the prophets yeah right yeah yeah matthew 5 and 17 think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill right so when they and then get for me um I forget get for me uh do, 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 do. when well just get, okay so it's also about him not coming to destroy the law or the prophets and so the they studied the law the priests you know the bishops and the the pharisees the scribes they studied the law they studied it diligently right and mm -hmm. they studied the prophets diligently but then when Yahshua came on the scene and he was preaching, you know, the, the law and the prophets and how he came to fulfill. And he's the one that the law and the prophets were talking about. And the people like, no, that's, that can't be so, you know, you have to keep those commandments. You have to, you know, um, when they were talking about him um, doing something on the Sabbath day, right? Because the Sabbath day was when, you weren't supposed to do anything. That was the day of rest. But Yahshua came, I think he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. And then they, they spoke against them because they didn't understand what was the purpose of Yahweh. They didn't understand that from the very beginning. 
And like, you know, going back to what I was saying, you cannot have a understanding or, or retain Yahweh in your knowledge if you don't have the very, from the very beginning, the foundation, the very foundation when we first walk into class. And it's so important. It seems so simple, but it's so important because that is what's going to carry you on. That is what's going to keep you in class. When someone comes up to you and tell you, oh, you know, um, you don't have to, or, 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 or comes and gives you a law to, to keep or, or quote you scriptures that, you know, or God said this or God said that. But if you don't have, if you can't go back to that first love, when you first came into class, what caught you? And I know when I came into class, what caught me is they went over, you know, the names first. And then when they went over the names, they went over the tabernacle pattern. And then they went over, um, you know, that Godhead and, and things. And then they went to what I call the foundation scripture, the John 17 and 1, you know, that this is life eternal. They went over, um, you know, Yahshua came to fulfill, you know, they went to the law and the prophets. So these are the simple things that Yahweh has given us and that's going to sustain us and that's going to keep us. And, and this is what we need to retain this in our knowledge. It's not hard. It's so simple, but yet it's so profound. And so when you're talking about, when you talk about the, the I would say, the ones who are not called or chosen or the rest of the world, right? Yahshua said he does not pray for them. He prayed for those who the father has given them. And so if, if our job is to, as, as ambassadors of this gospel, our job is to preach the, the gospel in a simplicity form. Our job is to go out and, you know, if somebody wants to know, cause I know it's hard that we can't, everybody doesn't want to listen. But going back to what Yahshua did, going back to the law and the prophets, right? Because there's no other way and there's nowhere else for us to go because like, where else are you going to go? There's nowhere else to go. You can't go to the church because we already know, you know, every church is going to have some type of different doctrine. You know, uh, a Baptist, a, a Catholic, a Presbyterian, they're going to have their own doctrine. Right. And so the aim is to um, get, get for them at that aim where it talks about what she was just um, talking about, how we um, study and, and um, comparative religions. Right. Mm -hmm. So we compare mm -hmm. what they have. Get, read that aim. Number four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, mm -hmm. comparative religions, psychology, philosophy and modern practical and occult science. To study and, pro and promote, it says to study, encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, right? And comparative religion. So when, you know, it's okay for, for you to hear, you know, what else would they have going on or what they're preaching, but then compare it and then go back to the scriptures. So when they say, oh, um, you know, God has many names, like what she was talking about. Well, go back to, to the scriptures and prove it. Because where in the scriptures are you going to hear that Yahweh has many names? Or where in the scriptures are you going to hear? Or um, it doesn't matter what you call him. That's not what, that's not what Yahweh says. As a matter of fact, <laughs> let's go to the scripture. Um, what Yahweh says, well, we, we know what Yahweh says about um, when they glorify his name and, and what he'll do to the priests who, uh, who don't lay his name to heart, right? Because Yahweh is not playing about his name. This is not something that you can just skip over and, you know, think that you will be okay because you, oh, you heard that name. Oh, it's okay. No, there is a purpose. There's a pattern and there's a plan right within the name itself. Yahweh manifesting himself in a physical body Walk the earth plane as who? Yahshua the Messiah. Well, what does Yahshua mean? Yahweh is salvation. Well, how are you going to get salvation? How are you going to have that understanding of Yahweh through salvation? Yahshua said, go back to well, uh, go back to the scriptures, go back to Isaiah 8 and 20, right? So you can un so you can know who the scriptures are talking about. 
It says to the law and to the testimony. If they or anybody speak not according to this word, there is no light or understanding in them. And Yahshua also um, talks about how, uh, you know, they, they don't believe him. For He says, don't believe him for his works. Don't get, give me that scripture which talks about believe him for his works sake. I think it's in, uh, is it Matthew? Okay, I'm looking for it. Okay, John. Yeah, so John 14 and 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Right, for the, so believe him for the very work's sake. So what was the works that Yahshua came to do? Um, the works that Yahshua came to do was to fulfill all righteousness. And he fulfilled them by, you know, when you talk about going back to Moses, you know, how Moses was um, a goodly child and a mother hid him. Just the stories that you read back there are not just talking about Moses. They're pointing to Yahshua. And so when Yahshua come in the scene, he's going to do the same thing. Moses uh, was born under the death decree. Yahshua had to be born under the death decree. Moses um, was was raised up in Pharaoh's house and he uh, killed the Egyptian. He buried him in the sand. Um, he resurrected out in the wilderness to Sinai. Yahshua had to come in, die, bury, and resurrect. Moses had a sister Miriam who uh, looked over him. Looked over him. Yahshua come in. He's going to have a Miriam look up, look over him. It's going to be the same thing, you know. Um, Adam, he came in. Adam died willingly, died for his bride. Yahshua willingly died for his bride. It says Yahshua is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, and it says uh, talks about how Yahshua was that Lamb who was. Um, you know, he didn't say anything. He didn't he didn't scream or holler. He didn't fight or budge because he willingly died for his bride. These are the things, these are the, the witnesses that Yahshua is going to to point out in order for us to have a uh understanding, in order for us to be firmly to, to have a firm foundation and to be firm in this gospel, because that's the whole point for us not to waver or not to have any doubt that Yahweh sent his son, Yahshua, and it's no longer Jesus anymore. We're not being saved up under Jesus. Jesus cannot do anything for you. The name of the, the Savior, the name that you can be saved in is Yahshua. But in order for you to be saved in that name, you have to go back to the foundation. You have to go back to the very beginning, which understanding that name, which is Yahweh. And so, you know, it's okay if you don't know everything as of right now, but like I said, keep coming to class because you're not gonna learn everything in, in one you know session, in one class. We have to retain Yahweh in our knowledge. We have to keep coming back and hearing the same thing over and over again. And um, get for me that scripture this is my favorite scripture. I know I like to call it with talk about Yahweh um, is, is not changed. You can't change Yahweh. I think is it is it Isaiah is it 52 or 53? Mm -hmm. I'm, I might be quoting it wrong. Yeah, Malachi. Malachi um, I am Yahweh. Yeah. For I am Yahweh. I change not. Yes. Yeah, so I, he says, I am Yahweh. I change not. Keep going. Um. And then he just says, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we don't have to be consumed by every wind of doctrine. So if Yahweh say he does not change, not he does not change. I'm sorry. And so when you hear the same thing, when you go to, to a different class and you go to, you know, um, just hearing anything about the gospel and you hearing that same gospel being preached, you understand that that's the spirit of Yahweh. That's that spirit of life speaking through each and every one of us because we are hearing the same doctrine preached. And it's a good thing because if we go, if we were out there just like with the churches, if you hop around church hopping, you know, you're going to hear different things. You're going to hear different, different opinions, different concepts from each and every pastor that, you know, has a pulpit, but it's not so. We should be 
on get, get for me, and this is gonna probably be my last scripture. Get um Acts the fourth chapter um on the day of Pentecost because if Yahweh is spirit, right, and He is the one that that has given um divine understanding to each and every one of the prophets, right, that spoke, but they spoke with the with the um understanding and the revelation of Yahweh. And so when we come down here and when you when anybody come down here and you hear speakers speaking on the same, we're on the same page, right? We're not all over the place. We're in agreement. We are one. You're going to hear that and you know that that is the spirit because I didn't say, I didn't, I didn't talk to, you know, Sarah before she came to class or Sarah didn't talk to Anthony before he came and Anthony didn't talk to, um, you know, the, 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 the second to Scott, mm-hmm. neither one of us spoke to each other and was like, oh, we're going to, you know, preach Yahweh. We're going to preach the same thing. No, it's mm-hmm. that spirit within us because it's not us. It's that spirit that's operating throughout each and every one of us that is is running the show and that is telling us what to speak. Yahweh said, just like he told Moses, he said, I will be in your mouth and you're going to speak to Aaron. You're going to tell Aaron what to speak. And I'm going to speak through Aaron. It's the same thing going on. Yahweh is running the show. He's going to be the one that's going to speak through us. It's not us speaking, just like with Moses. Moses couldn't speak because he was a stutterer. Mm -hmm. And so Yahweh chose him. But Yahweh said, no, I will be with thee. I'm going to be in your mouth. He said, who made man's mouth? You have a brother. Your your brother speak good. So I'm going to speak through you. And you're going to speak to your brother. And your brother going to tell the children of, um, speak to the children of Israel and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So we're going to be the same way. We're going to have that same spirit. We're going to be on the same court when you talking about us preaching the gospel and, and, and having to understand that we should be, we should be speak, preaching and speaking the same thing. Um, read for me that scripture, Acts, and uh, pick it up. Just start at four. And... Um, Mm, nope. Were you wanting Pentecost? Yeah, I want Pentecost. Set two. two. I'm sorry. Yeah, go get Acts in two. Just start at one then. Do we have time to read all that? <laughs> you have three minutes. I'll just start reading. Okay. Acts two and one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Mm-hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Okay, so it appeared, okay, cloven tongues as fire, and it sat upon each of them, read. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right, as the Spirit gave them utterance to speak, they were all filled. They said they were with one accord, in one place, filled with that Holy Spirit. So us coming down and, and, and preaching and it's like, who gave you authority to speak on behalf of God? Well, Yahweh, first of all, had to call us out of the world, you know, by grace saying that we're going to be the ones because Joshua manifested himself in a physical body. Then he poured out his spirit. And so when, uh, when here, he poured out his spirit on the day of Pentecost to those apostles. And he told them, he said, go and preach the gospel, the great commission to, to, to every, to the four corners of the earth, go out and preach the gospel. And so that is what our duty is. That's what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to be on one court, the same one accord, the same going out and preaching the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah. Keep reading. Five. And they, and there were, and they, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Mm-hmm. Drop were, down, I don't think we just drop down to um, 17. 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Yahweh, I will pour out my spirit I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh, read. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy mm -hmm. and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So when, when you hear us speaking, talking about a vision and a revelation, Yahweh is talking about what he's going to do. So there's nothing new that we we're seeing visions. We're seeing a vision of Yahweh, which Elohim, and we're having a revelation of what the vision, what we saw. And it says that men shall dream dreams. We already know that Yahweh said that he will, um, he will show himself to them in visions and in dreams. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just amazing how Yahweh can, he has a power to do this. It's not us. It's not Tara that's speaking. It's not, you know, Scott It's not Anthony. It's Joshua speaking, pouring out his spirit within us. And so that we can have a knowledge and, and have an understanding and have that truth of the gospel and of Yahweh, our father. And um, sorry for going over, but thank you for the time. And I hope somebody got something out of that. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. And um, Tara, you can go ahead and close us out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this Wednesday's class. We hold classes on Wednesday from 7 to 9 and on Sundays from 11 to 1. And if you have any uh, announcements, nope. there any announcements? I don't nope. think so. May we be dismissed for the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.